I'm Scott Al Miller. This is my daily life living in Central America. Today, I'm recording this on the 4th of July, the birthday, kind of in a weird way, of the United States. It's not actually, the United States as we know it is actually from 1789. 1776 is the year when we kind of made a decision that we were going to be independent, but we were well into a war that started in 1770, and at the time, it wasn't even agreed upon date. It's really a back uh, historian thing where the United States kind of picked a date and went back in time and said, yeah, we're going to call it this. It was a weird set of circumstances to call it July 4th and 1776, but it's what we're going with. So today is America's birthday. Happy birthday to the United States. I'm doing a live stream this afternoon. You will have already seen it by the time you see this video, so don't go looking for it. But it came up coincidentally, I guess, today that someone said, Americans, you can't refer to people from America as Americans because there's the Americas and everyone's an American. And we get this once in a while. It's been a long time since we addressed it on the show. So I'm going to talk about this because it's an important topic and it's really important because uh, it it really crosses some some bad lines. And we need to kind of set some boundaries as to what people are allowed to say, why it is that way, and set some understanding. Because once people understand why Americans are called Americans, I think it helps a lot. So let's get to that right after the bump. All right, I've got a couple old videos that touch on this. One is called The Naming of the Americas, and the other is What Do We Call Americans, right? But these are both pretty old videos, and it's been definitely more than a year since we touched on this, and we have so many new people. So let's talk about this a little bit. First of all, The Name of the Americas is a European colonial imperial name for a region that was lumped together and is really more than just one region, calling all of everything in the West, anything is kind of unnecessary. It's the Western Hemisphere. There's no need to have a continental name for the whole thing. And importantly, depending on the region of the world you're from, including the majority of North America, they don't consider it to be a single place. They consider it to be North America and South America, and together they are the Americas, but there is no America. The only America, in English, is the United States. The Americas refers to the two continents, Calling the people from the Americas Americans is weird because it would be more like the Americansers, right? Because it would be people from a plural. But why would you ever refer to those as a single people? Because they're not a single people. There is really no reason to refer to them in that way. It's not like Europeans where there is a certain shared heritage over a relatively small area. And even then, referring to people as Europeans doesn't have a lot of practicality uh, because typically you want to refer to people from the European Union or specifically specific countries or regions, but we do refer to Europeans and probably shouldn't, but referring to Americans as the people of all the Americas would be inappropriate. It would be super colonial and kind of honestly racist. I realize that's probably not why people are going to do it, but if you really look at the underpinnings, it's not appropriate in that sense. People in the Americas have their individual identities, and those identities are pretty broad. People from Argentina versus people from Colombia versus people from Mexico versus the United States or Canada don't necessarily want to be lumped together as a single people as if the fact that they fall within a certain set of longitudinal lines defines who they are more than their cultures and history. So that's the first piece. So it's the Americas, not America. And I realize in some languages it is called America, but in English it is not. So it's important because we're talking about English. If you want to talk about the names of people from different countries, those things vary by language. People from Germany are called Germans. In English, they're the Deutsch. In German, they're completely different things, and you can't just mix it around. If you do, you end up with confusion, like the Pennsylvania Dutch, who are actually German, not Dutch, because we tried to apply German names in English. It doesn't mean that different languages shouldn't unify on names, but there's reasons why they generally don't, and it kind of makes sense in a lot of cases. But this is important, right? We're talking about English, and we have names for things. For the majority of English speakers, possibly all English speakers, but probably just the majority, people from the northern part of the Americas are known as North Americans, and people from the southern part are known as Southern Americans or South Americans. They are not referred to ever as Americans because there's no continent in most of English, that is most of the English-speaking world of America. That concept doesn't exist, especially to the people from primarily North America. They are very, very strict on that North and South America are two completely independent continents that do not really share 
anything other than a really tiny impassable land bridge. Impassable being maybe not the most accurate term, giving a half million people crossed it last year, but it's not supposed to be crossed. Anyway, supposed to be by whoever makes up the rules, and no one does because it's just an international boundary. Anyway, so we start with there is no name like people are claiming, right? The the foundation for America doesn't get to call itself Americans. The people of America don't get to call them, is based on a misuse of a name in English already. So it's already a making something up and being super colonial. Both things are bad. You can't just take the European view of the Western Hemisphere and be like, everyone has to answer to that because some Italian said it and some German put it on a map and they're in charge. That's not okay, right? So let's start with that. That's not okay. The generally accepted names are either the Americas or North and South America. That's fine in nearly all languages. That's fine. That doesn't make the name of the people Americans. In some languages, it is, and that's okay in those languages where that's correct, right? They're different situations. Okay, so let's get back to the United States of America. That is the name of the country. Generally, people's uh, names come from the country that they're from. What else are you going to call people from the United States of America? Well, you can call them United Statesians. It's awkward, but you could do it. In Spanish, we do. Estadunidenses. That makes a certain amount of sense until you think about it, and then it doesn't. Suddenly, we have a problem. Everyone from many different countries have United States in their names. Just the United States of America has a tendency to make it really obvious. Now, not all countries have it currently. Many have gotten rid of it, but the United States of Mexico has existed. The United States of Colombia has existed, as have many other multistatial uh, entities. So this name would be exactly like using America where there's an overlap, except there is no actual overlap with America. There aren't Americans in English, so there isn't an overlap. But United Statesians, Estadunidenses, does have overlaps if we're treating those words equally. So that doesn't make any sense. The, the goal of not having Americans get a name doesn't work, right? You can't just take a third of a billion people and say, you people don't exist anymore, right? I realize that that is a standard trope for trying to minimize a population because you don't like them, but it's not a valid thing and it's never okay to do. It's not okay to do to Americans. It's not okay to do to Arabs. It's not okay to do to Chinese. It's not, not okay to do to anyone, right? All people have equal rights to identity and existence. You can dislike a country, culture, or region all you want, but the moment that applies to individual people, it becomes a problem. That's where things change. So we're never going to let that happen. We're never going to cross that line. At least that's our goal. So we have another problem, right? And that is that the region that the United States is in also has other names. Yes, there are some people who like to claim that the name it has is America, but they don't get to make that decision, right? The names of places are fluid, and the entire region of the Americas is also known as Columbia. And that's why there's some places like British Columbia, specifically the little slice in the northwest area of North America where the British had control of Columbia. It was called Columbia. The Columbia River goes through other areas. There's lots of areas that at different times have been called Columbia. Uh, and there's a nation of Colombia, but the nation of Colombia is only one piece of what used to be Grand Colombia. Venezuela has equal claim to Colombia in the Grand Colombia sense, as does Ecuador and Panama. All those regions are Colombia from that sense, but all of the Americas is Colombia from another sense, as is places that are not uh, on the continent, right? Uh, uh, Puerto Rico and Hispaniola and Cuba, right? Those are places that are also part of Colombia but are not part of the Americas necessarily. Sometimes we lump them in, sometimes we don't. You see how this gets complicated. Are they not Americans? They're definitely not part of the continent. They're part of an uh, oceanic system. So if we're going to use this, Americans are not, you know, they don't get to use that term. Well, then suddenly neither do the people in the Caribbean. Is that really what we were intending? Oh, this creates a lot of problems when we start trying to take away the identity of Americans. Uh, it falls apart pretty quickly. But so we have this problem that uh, at least at one time, the United States of Columbia, the United States of America, both had United States in their name. Both are equally in America and in Colombia by looking at it from that sense. So do Colombians not get the right to call themselves Estadunidenses? They don't want to, but would they not have the equal right to by that sense? Yeah, they should. And do they not get the right to call them 
themselves Colombians. If you're going to take away the right of Americans to be called Americans, you have to take away the right of Colombians to be called Colombians because that applies to them. That's problematic. Now, the person who said this to me in today's uh, uh, post said uh, this from Mexico. Now, I don't know if he's Mexican or just lives in Mexico or just claims to live in Mexico, but that's what his profile says. Well, we have another problem. You see, Mexico was at one time a much larger region. So first of all, the original Mexico started in North America. That is the generally held belief. I'm sorry, Mexico is in North America, but farther north in North America, in the United States, possibly in Canada, was the homeland of the current Mexican population. And so the traditional Mexico was actually far north and migrated south. This has been accepted for thousands of years. It may not be true, but it is the believed uh, heritage of that region. But even when Mexico formed as a... Uh, sub-component of New Spain, it still included all the way north to Oregon and all the way south to the Panamanian border. All of that region was Mexico. Now, in around 1821, Mexico broke up and many of those constituent areas became other states. But all of them up until 1821 were Mexico. And that means all of them were equally Mexico. One part breaking off doesn't become less of the original place. If Texas was to break off from the United States today and be its own country, it would not have been less of the United States than it was previously. Both countries are equally United States in the past. Now, going forward, one may keep the name and one may change the name. That generally happens. Generally, the largest component of the original uh, entity keeps the name simply because the other is seen as breaking off. That's not always the case, but it doesn't change that they're all equal. And so this is important. The United States, Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, Nicaragua, and Costa Rica all are or were in 1821 equally Mexico. At the beginning of 1821, this term Mexican applied absolutely equally to all those people. And it is unbelievably abhorrent to claim otherwise, that would be the same as saying that someone from California is less American than someone from New York or that someone from uh, Chihuahua is less Mexican than someone from the Yucatan. That is not the case. Being a member of that place, you are equal as members, right? That is generally accepted as an uncrossable line in the way that we think of the people of a country. So all of those people, yes, today, there's a country with the name Mexico, and it has a, a tradition over the last 205 years, four years, where it has been independent, mostly, of those other regions. Not all of it. Some has been less time, some has been more. But you have a problem where people from Texas are just as much Mexicans as people from Mexico City. Because Texas was Mexico at the time that it broke off, those were Mexicans breaking off from Mexico. I realized lots of foreign people came in and helped them, and now there's been a large immigrant population, and now they're immigrants into Mexico, into what used to be Mexico. But it creates this complicated problem, and this is something the United States has to face when Mexicans move into the United States. Are they actually immigrants, or are they simply returning? Right? Are they the prodigal children? coming back to their homeland because it was Mexico, at least most of it, right, or large swaths of it. So it gets, it's a very complicated topic. But places like Nicaragua are also Mexico. So calling Mexicans using the term Mexican to refer to themselves, are we going to take that away from them and say, oh, wait, the United States of Mexico is not allowed to be called the United States because that overlaps with other places that use the United States. And the word Mexico isn't allowed to be used because I realize the United States is not used anymore, but it has been used in Mexico. In the, and they can't be called Mexicans anymore because, well, Nicaraguans and Hondurans and, and Americans all have the right to the term Mexican as well. They were all part of what was Mexico as a region, right? Obviously, we don't want to take away the term Colombian from the people who live in Colombia and the term Mexican from the people who live in Mexico. It is equal to trying to take away the term American from the people who live in America. So this is a universal problem. It happens everywhere. And of course, Greece and Macedonia got into a massive fight about this because Greece didn't want the people of Macedonia to be allowed to be referred to as Macedonians. And the, the only reason that they had any leverage about this is because they blocked their entrance into the EU based on it. But these fights for names that identity belongs to someone can be really detrimental and very dangerous. And in this case, there is one. There is no foundation for the name American applying to someone outside the United States in English. 
Two, so if you need that, you would have North American and South American if you ever needed to refer to people of a continent. But why do you need to refer to people of a continent? It's really not an appropriate thing. And we know this from talking about like Africans or Asians, which is a little bit more obvious, whereas Europeans kind of have a certain hom a homogeneous uh, uh, culture and history, not quite, but a little bit more than most places. So Europeans have a tendency to see the world as continental uh, divides. And of course, Europe isn't a real continent. It's a cultural area carved off of Asia. People know when you look at a map that Europe and Asia is a single place. And Asia simply meant the East. So Europe was just a cultural area. The word Europe refers to a Greek goddess, right? So, so the idea that Europe is being used to refer to a group of people is actually that it is referring to a group of people and not to a continent. And Asia refers to the eastern portion of the Eurasian continent uh, traditionally and is, should not be seen as a continent itself. Eurasia should be seen as a continent. And immediately we never refer to people as Eurasians, right? Not practically. I mean, you could in, in a sense do so. Ah, all the people who live, you know, in this giant body would be the Eurasians. Okay, like you can say it, but it's useless, right? There's no, no practical purpose for it. Asian, even that is generally useless because people who say Asian very rarely mean to equally refer to people from Israel and India and Pakistan and Afghanistan and China and Thailand and Russia. But all of those things are equally Asian. You can't say one is more Asian than another. They all lie within Asia. Russian, I realize, covers both Asia and Europe, but it's still all Eurasia, but only some of it is considered to be in what is the Asia portion of Eurasia. So, okay, you have a little bit there where, depending on where you're in, in Russia, but the Asian portion of Russia represents the largest portion of Asia, of any, of any country at least. And so Russians are more Asian than anyone else if you're going to go by that standard, right? So you have this really complex thing that these names don't have purposes for existing. And people from Asia often argue that only some people from Asia are Asian, which is crazy. But so if you're in the Americas, calling them Americans doesn't have a purpose except to, to attempt to harm people from the United States. That's not okay, obviously. So this is a weird linguistic problem, and I understand that it's a problem. People who want to be identified as Americans don't have a way to be so if they're not from the United States. No one in the world accepts that. That's, I guess, a problem, but why would someone ever desire to be labeled as a person from a multi-continental conglomerated group. It doesn't make sense to want that realistically. Being part of Latin America, that can make sense, right? Uh, but even Latin America, right, this creates a lot of problems because where did Latin America start? In Quebec City, right? The French, which obviously Latin America applies equally to Portuguese and Spanish and French speakers, but the term was first used for the French speakers, not the Spanish speakers, which is commonly believed today. So at some point, many Spanish and Portuguese speakers simply decided the French didn't get to be a part of Latin America. But technically, the French have to decide if everyone else gets to be Latin America. In reality, it's everyone who speaks a romantic language is Latin America, which then includes most of the United States. And then everything in the Americas is Latin America because there's no place in the Western Hemisphere that doesn't really speak a romantic language, at least part of the time. And especially since English is half a romantic language. Like... This gets really complicated using these names. We have things we generally understand to be Latin America, and we understand that it doesn't generally include the U.S. and Canada, but that creates a lot of problems. So when we start getting into this really uh, diligent, like, no, America only belongs to all these other people, and the people of the United States of America don't have a right to any name except ma some made-up thing, right? What could you make up? I guess you could call them USA agains, right? Like you get really, really weird and you wouldn't be able to say it. It wouldn't be natural and, and it just doesn't make any sense. All right. And, and it's not a name that's going to carry on, right? The, the idea that like Mexico can rename itself. They could call themselves the United States of Mexico one day, the Republic of Mexico the, the next day, the Kingdom of Mexico the next day. The, the name Mexico continues, right? The people, it makes sense to continue being Mexicans. Now, when the United States was going to split into, uh, potentially, into the Confederacy in the South and the, and the federal states in the North, the Union, as they called it, they referred to people inside the country as Confederates and Unionists, 
but all the people of both sides were Americans, right? It was America splitting in half. Everyone saw themselves as the children of America and the Confederate States of America and the United States of America would all be Americans. And the term American would continue to refer to both groups just because they were changing their names for one part didn't mean they were changing their, their name of themselves. So this gets, it, it is a complicated thing. But the idea that you can take away the name American from Americans, it's the only name that we have. It is the identity, and it is the only logical name to use for them. It is the only name that has no useful overlap with any other people anywhere on Earth. So that's a really good use of the term American. It's better, actually, than Mexico calling its people Mexicans, which is just fine. But if you were going to compare on value, America actually has more claim because there's no competing claim. The idea that the Americas in English should be called Americans doesn't really hold water. It's a really silly thing. Why would you ever want to refer to someone from Colombia or from Argentina or from Cuba as an American? You wouldn't, not practically. We do so only to try to make a point that Americans shouldn't get to call themselves anything. And it just shows the show that no matter what Americans were called, people would complain about the fact that they exist as individuals. And this is true everywhere, right? Everybody faces uh, a racist backlash from some other region, right? Everybody does. And America is notably one of the most racist countries. So a lot of people get really annoyed by Americans because they tend to come from a culture that tends to edge towards a lot of racism. And that's somewhat understandable, but it's really really important to remember that America is a place the people who are born there have absolutely no control over it and simply wanting to take away their identity as humans it's never okay it's not okay to do to Americans it's not okay to do to anyone else right we need to respect people on an individual uh, basis regardless of the country that they come from right um, you know if some if you're at war currently with Russia as Americans are Right? We should never see that as an individual Russian being someone who perpetrated that war or is at fault for that or should lose their identity because we don't like the actions of their government right? or the opinions of their government. That is, that's just not how the world should work, and we all know better than this. So understanding where these names come from, why they apply, why there's no other option, why everything is an overlap, and why it's less of a problem than many other names in the region hopefully makes it a little bit more clear and gives you what you need so when people say these silly things, you're ready to go, nah, look, I got a link. I know this explanation. Absolutely, America is the correct name. There is no America continent. Nobody thinks there's an America continent in English. That's just a very silly concept. There's North America, there's South America, there's the Americas. And why would you ever need to refer to the people of them except to make a really not inappropriate point? You wouldn't. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. As always, I will see all of you tomorrow. And click on one of these links here that comes up on the screen and go to another video. That would be fantastic. Or scroll down, pick one that YouTube picks out for you. Anything you click on helps tell the algorithm that this show was keeping you entertained.